Safari Center is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, it's a nature center that focuses on hands-on feet wet opportunities for um, education, exploration, and conservation. We just want people to have accessibility to the environment and we want people to understand that our natural resources are invaluable. I'm Tess Taylor Tynes, I'm the Conservation Science Coordinator at the Marine Discovery Center. This was a high school track and field, um, which as you can imagine, wasn't really being used by a lot of fish or birds. Five acres that used to be kind of non-functional for wildlife is now really a nursery for wildlife. So, you know, in addition to the, all the marine life that, that's probably out here, you probably also see a lot of junk and trash. Yes, yes. So tell me about some of the things you've seen. Um, you know, commonly we find items like bottles and bottle caps that may have flown off someone's boat as they were driving by. Um, we find plastic bags, um, fishing line is left behind a lot of the time. So the Florida Microplastic Awareness Project started out of the IFAS extension of University of Florida. Okay, I'm going to be uh, collecting a water sample from the kayak launch. Ed Loomis has been involved really, really strongly through microplastics since the beginning of our involvement with the studies. I have orthotics inside that are fairly new and I don't want to destroy them. Citizen science is a huge part of the mission at Marine Discovery Center. It's a one liter bottle. And the whole idea behind citizen science is that we can have people from the public getting involved at a scientific level without having to go through the labs or the master's programs or what have you. And we always take the sample from the surface of the water. And this is the sample we'll be analyzing. I think using citizens allows us to not only gain a better perspective through that data, but they can also educate others around them. So it's quite literally a ripple effect. Back to the laboratory to uh, see what we just collected. It's a little lighter than coffee. <laughs> it might be green tea, maybe. So when you're done with this, you're going to take the filter and then put it underneath right. the microscope to right. see. I'm looking at every little square on that filter. Anything that might resemble a plastic, a film, or a fiber. I just love the outdoors. I just love everything about nature. And, uh, and it's just, I've been that way since I was 11 years old. <laughs> now I'm 79. <laughs> Volunteers, especially ones like Ed, are completely invaluable. There's, there, it's almost indescribable how important they are to us. It keeps me young and it's wonderful working with young people. So this is a cooler full of archive samples from our last project. We have a, a three letter site code uh, from where the sample site was taken. I could probably fill a storage unit full of them if I really wanted to. <laughs> My thoughts are that it's pretty inevitable at this point, um, but those little Petri dishes are, are like little things of hope for me. Um, this allows us to gain a, a better understanding of this environmental issue in our local area so that we can tackle it in the future. Somebody's cast net. And someone like Ed can say, I'm part of the solution and that I'm pro providing data.
yeah, I see a lot of hope in the work that we've done. Be sure to subscribe to Solutionaries to see all our latest videos right here on YouTube.